Greetings and salutations, fellow book readers. This is Mark, and the book I will review today is Three Men in a Boat. Before we continue, this is personalized limited edition of Three Men in a Boat with leather cover designed and made by me. Actually, this is a double edition, which also contains Jerome's other novel, Three Men on the Bamboo. At the end of the video, I will tell you a couple of ways of how you can get one for yourself, if you are interested. Now let's get back to the review. Three Men in a Boat, to say nothing of the dog, is a novel written by Jerome K. Jerome and published in 1889. The story is a fictionalized account of a river trip based on the author's boating holidays on the River Thames. The leisure river boating on the Thames was made safe and pleasurable after commercial river traffic was substituted by the railroads, and it became a popular pastime for the Londoners. The three men's itinerary between Kingston and Oxford is still followed and explored today by the fans of the book, and most of the places originally visited by the trio are still around. Jerome, who was an English writer and humorist of the late Victorian era and early 20th century, wrote a few other novels, but nothing as successful and popular as Three Men in a Boat. Well, there is the before-mentioned sequel titled Three Men on the Bamboo, which enjoys some popularity between the fans of the original novel. Okay, what is Three Men in a Boat about? It is about your typical vacation, where nothing goes right and as planned, and the trip becomes one long comic disaster. Perhaps not so funny to the participants as it is to the people that you tell it about it. I think in the following quote, Jerome makes rather clear the book's purpose. What reader asks nowadays in a book is that it should improve, instruct, and elevate. This book wouldn't elevate a cow. I cannot consciously recommend it for any useful purpose, whatever. All I can suggest is that when you get tired of reading the best hundred books, you may take this for half an hour. It will be a change. Before we start the review, a bit of the plot. The plot is, as the title suggests, about three men and the dog sailing in a boat. The main characters are the narrator, Jay, who represents Jerome K. Jerome himself, and his two friends, George and Harris. And let's not forget Jay's dogs, Montmorency. The three men are your typical Victorian dandies, uncoordinated, unacquainted with, and unable to do well any physical task, which are the reasons for all the disastrous and comic situations they find themselves in during the trip. I can't sit still and see another man slaving and working. I want to get up and super intent and walk around with my hands in my pockets and tell them what to do. It is my energetic nature. I can't help it. The book takes place in the late part of the 19th century in and around London. The story begins in Jay's apartment, where the three friends discuss and make a list of all the possible physical disorders that might be affecting their health, and arrive at the conclusion that they are overworked, and as a possible remedy, decide to take a short holiday. After a long process of going over and eliminating options such as rest in the country and sea voyage for their inconveniences, they settle on a boat trip up the River Thames, sailing from Kingston and going all the way to Oxford. They began their preparations, which is another confusing and chaotic task, because of the disagreements on what is practical, needed, and should be taken on the voyage. I had walked into that reading room, a happy, healthy man. I crawled out, a decrepit wreck. On the day of the departure, they oversleep and have difficulty to reach the boat. But once on the river, the real problem starts, which, thanks to the three men's awkwardness, turned into quite a few amusing accidents and setbacks. And further, to kill occasional downtime between the mishaps, 
they recall some embarrassing episodes from their lives. Jay also describes places they pass through and historic events connected to them. And that's the basic plot. What are my thoughts about the three men in a boat? I found the reading of the novel to be pure fun and joy. Just like the adventurous theme of it, the book is funny and relaxing. Actually, it is not one of these books that you think or talk about afterwards. It is kind of like good food. You enjoy it while it lasts, and it doesn't leave you with much of an aftertaste. The story is told with this ageless English sense of humor, which I enjoy very much. Like this one. Everything has its drawbacks, said the man whose mother-in-law died, and they came down on him for the funeral expenses. And the comic narration also shines a different light on the Victorian era, which for me has this dark, somber and serious aura about it, and I imagine it being full of restrictions and rules. So the comedy gives it a bit of a different perspective on seemingly boring lives during those times. I read somewhere that the initial intention behind the writing of this semi-autobiographical tale was to produce some type of semi-serious travel guide for the weekend boater sailing on the River Thames. But fortunately, as it is common with many creative works, the project became alive and took its own path to become this comic and satirical narrative of the expedition, which is not a surprise if the predicaments our heroes had to face were based on Jerome K. Jerome's real experiences. But I think the plot is pretty fictionalized. Jerome himself seems to be giving us a hint when he writes, It is always the best policy to tell the truth. Unless, of course, you are an exceptionally good liar. There was the rainstorm which nobody expected or was prepared for, and the can of pineapples which didn't want to be opened and the impossible task of erecting a tent for the night, or Jay and George going for a walk, getting lost and having to spend the night out in the open just because Harris decided to move the boat to a different location while the two were absent. But besides all the disastrous dilemmas, there also are a few pleasant experiences during the trip such as being towed by a steam launch, which made the sailing comparable to flying, or laying down with a pipe after a satisfying meal and reflecting on how good life is and why it couldn't always be like this. How good one feels when one is full, how satisfied with ourselves and with the world. People who have tried it tell me that a clear consciousness makes you very happy and content, but a full stomach does the business quite as well, and is cheaper and more easily obtained. And they finished the trip in a pleasant restaurant, serving tasty French food. Further, the travel log is broken up with a few relevant, but mostly irrelevant and unrelated stories from the lives of the three lead characters, and also the dog. There is a story about smelly cheese which made passengers abandon the train and made the wife leave the house, and Harris trying to lead the lost tourist out of the maze but getting lost himself, and the nature and ability of fox terrier dogs, such as Montmorency, to get other dogs in trouble while convincing people around of their own innocence. Jay also talks about the art of telling a good fishing story by the old-timers and their tendency to exaggerate the difficulty of catching the fish and its size. On the more serious and somber side, while relaxing on the boat, they encounter a dead body of a woman floating in the water, and Jay retells her dreadful life story, which led to her tragic end in the river. There is also a bit of Jerome's life philosophy squeezed into the goofy prose. Life is a thing to be lived, not spent, to be faced, not ordered. Life is not a game of chess, the victory to the most knowing. It is a game of cards, one's hand by skill to be made the best of. 
Further, the book contains some interesting descriptions of the towns the boat passes through and the historic events connected with them, such as Kingston and many inns around it, which Queen Elizabeth had visited. Visit to Magna Carta Island, where the document was supposedly signed, and where Henry VIII and Anne Bullion used to meet until he tired of her and had her decapitated, or Dorchester, which was the capital of the West Anglo-Saxon kingdom during the medieval era. So, perhaps initially, Jerome had a vague idea about making the book into some type of travel companion. And to be fair, there are people who treat the novel a bit like a guide and follow the route described in the book. To sum it up, Three Men in a Boat is a type of book I like to read occasionally to forget a bit the daily routine and get away a little from thinking. Basically, it is vacation for your brain and you can read and laugh without making an effort at getting the jokes. The plot will keep you in the moment instead of analyzing the hidden meaning. And if you are trying to figure out the symbolism, let me give you a hint, there isn't any. Well, the boat trip is a symbol for life voyage itself, but it is made rather obvious in this quote from the book. Let your boat of life be light, packed with only what you need, a homely home and simple pleasures, one or two friends worth the name, someone to love and someone to love you, a cat, a dog, and a pipe or two, enough to eat and enough to wear, and a little more than enough to drink, for thirst is a dangerous thing. And that's all the metaphoric and symbolic alluding there is. To me, Three Men in a Boat is a nice example of early modern literature with the typical in-your-face British sense of humor. It can be considered the literary equivalent of something like American Pie or maybe Three Stooges going on vacation. Even though they are American, but it is similar, silly and direct humor. There is the previously mentioned sequel novel to Three Men in a Boat, titled Three Men on the Bumble, included in the physical book about the bicycle trip through the Black Forest in Germany, which is also quite popular with Jerome's fans, and I will review it in the near future. Three Men in a Boat was adapted a few times into visual media. The two I enjoyed most are the 1956 British film and the 1970s musical produced for TV in the Soviet Union. They will give you a nice visual reference to the reading. Okay, let's talk about the physical book. The book I am holding is a paperback which I transform into a hardcover leather-bound edition. To make the cover, I use grade A naturally tan hide I buy from a tannery in North Spain. It is the same leather Louis Vuitton uses to make his bags, so it is top quality. I do all the processing of the leather myself. First, I designed the cover, and here I used a painting of three stooge-like men, somewhat lost and looking at the horizon, probably confused whether they should take a boat or bicycle trip. This is the bag with the blurb, and inside front cover I printed a quote from the book. If you want to see a more detailed video where I explain how I transform paperback into leather hardcover, click on the link in the description. I will make a maximum of 100 editions of each title. Each one will be numbered and initialed, and the numbers will go in chronological order from two up, since number one stays with me. The price will be around $100, so if you would like me to make one for you, you can click below on my email and send me a message. I do not guarantee I will do it, since it will depend on the time I have available, access to leather, and if I can get my hands on the copy of the book. Now, if you're not willing to spend the $100, but you still want the book, what you can do is click below on the PayPal link and donate $3 or more to my channel, and for every 100 donations, I will make a lottery and draw one name, and the winner will receive the book. So, if you are cheap but feel lucky, this might be the way to do it. 
Also, your donations give me the extra motivation to make the book reviews, and I appreciate them very much. So, thank you in advance. One more thing, when you make your donation, remember to include the title of the book you would like to win. Uh, the book itself is beautiful. Visually, it has a very nice texture, it smells great, and the more you handle it, the more beautiful it will become. And it makes a great gift for yourself or somebody who appreciates books. So if you want one, don't snooze or you might lose. Well, that's it. So let's end it here. And until next time, keep your ear close to the ground and read the book. Adios.